Summary Overview, Chapter 14, Expounding with Peace and Joy, Section 1, Paragraphs 1 to 8. Bodhisattva Manjushri asks about how Bodhisattvas Mahasattvas should expound the Lotus Sutra during the Age of Evil. Shakyamuni Buddha expounds that Bodhisattvas Mahasattvas should apply the four principles. The first principle is appropriate actions. Bodhisattvas Mahasattvas should cultivate qualities such as patience, perseverance, gentleness, kindness, non judgment, and non discrimination. The second principle is appropriate associations. In terms of building relationships with people from all walks of life, Bodhisattvas Mahasattvas should practice detachment so as to avoid unnecessary misunderstandings and potential conflicts arising from the associations. They should expound the Dharma according to the capacities of people without having any expectation in return. Most important of all, they should view the world phenomena as intrinsically empty and know that all phenomena arise by virtue of causation instead of creation. Therefore, engaging in solitary meditation to master their minds is vital. At that time, Bodhisattva Mahasattva Manjushri, the Prince of Dharma, asked the Buddha, O Bhagavath. These bodhisattvas are indeed rare. Out of their reverence and loyalty to the Buddha, they made great vows to uphold, read, and expound the Lotus Sutra during the age of evil in the future. O Bhagavath! During the age of evil in the future, how should these bodhisattvas mahasattvas expound the Lotus Sutra? The Buddha replied to Manjushri, If these bodhisattvas mahasattvas wish to expound the Lotus Sutra during the age of evil in the future, they should apply the four principles. The first two principles are appropriate actions and appropriate associations for a bodhisattva to expound the Lotus Sutra for all living beings. O Manjushri! What do I mean by the appropriate actions of a bodhisattva mahasattva? If bodhisattvas mahasattvas practice patience, perseverance, gentleness, and kindness without being violent, temperamental, or agitated, adopt the view of the middle way, and perceive reality as it is without making judgment or discrimination, then they are practicing the actions of a bodhisattva mahasattva. What do I mean by the appropriate associations of a bodhisattva mahasattva? Bodhisattvas mahasattvas should not have intimate associations with kings, princes, high ministers, or chief officers. Nor should they have intimate associations with non-Buddhists, Brahmins, Jains, or authors of secular literature or those glorifying non-Buddhist teachings. They should not associate with materialists or anti-materialists. They should not engage in extreme sports such as boxing or wrestling, nor should they have intimate relationships with singers, dancers, or actors. They should not have intimate associations with those in the caste of Shandala or those who raise pigs, sheep, chickens, or dogs. Nor should they have intimate associations with people who engage in hunting, fishing, or other sinful activities. If such people approach them at times, they may expound the Dharma for them, but they should not harbor any hope or expectation in return. Moreover, they should not have intimate associations with monks, nuns, lay male disciples, or lay female disciples who seek to become shravakas. They should avoid having conversations with them, visiting them, or staying in the same room or lecture hall as them. If such people approach them at times, they may expound the Dharma according to their level of capacities but they should not harbor any hope or expectation in return. O Manjushri! When preaching to women, Bodhisattvas Mahasattvas should be careful not to arouse thoughts of desire in them or display excessive delight in seeing them. If they should enter the homes of others, they should avoid having private conversations with young ladies, unmarried women, or widows. They should not have intimate relationships with the five types of hermaphrodites. They should avoid entering the homes of others alone. If for some reason they need to enter alone, then they should think of the Buddha with a focused mind. If they need to expound to women, they should smile without revealing their teeth and be mindful not to display their chests. For the sake of the Dharma, they should be extra mindful not to have intimate associations, let alone the rest of the other aspects. They should not be too delighted in nurturing young disciples, shramanas, or children, nor should they be too delighted in being their teachers. Instead, they should always enjoy engaging in solitary meditation so as to cultivate and master their mind. 
O Manjushri! These are what I mean by appropriate associations. Next, Bodhisattvas Mahasattvas should view all phenomena as being intrinsically empty in order to correctly perceive their true nature, which has no topsy-turvy, no movement, no regression, and no evolvement. It is like an empty nothingness, without intrinsic nature and beyond the expression of word. There is no birth, no emerging, no arising, no name, no form, no substantial existence, no quantity, no boundary, no hindrance, and no obstruction. All phenomena arise by reason of causation, and they are commonly explained in an inverted manner by reason of creation. Hence, they should always be delighted in viewing the manifestation of phenomena as such. This is the second principle of associations that Bodhisattvas Mahasattvas should uphold. Thereupon, the Bhagavath, wishing to reiterate his meaning, proclaimed in stanzas. Summary Overview, Chapter 14 Expounding with Peace and Joy, Section 2, Paragraphs 1-21 Shakyamuni Buddha speaks in poetic stanzas to summarize the essence of the first and second principles. If there are bodhisattvas who wish to expound the Lotus Sutra fearlessly and valiantly during the age of evil in the future, then they should practice the principles of appropriate actions and associations. They should always keep a distance from the kings and princes, ministers and chief officers, people engaging in hazardous sports, singers, dancers, and actors, as well as non-Buddhists and Brahmins. They should also refrain from having close relationships with people of arrogance, those who stubbornly attach to the lesser vehicle, as well as scholars of Tripitaka. They should not have close affiliation with monks who violate the precepts, nominal arhats, nuns who are fond of laughter and amusement, lay female disciples who are deeply obsessed with the five desires and yet seek nirvana in their present lifetimes. If there are people who are charitable and kind hearted, they arrive at the Bodhisattva's abodes. For the sake of hearing the Buddha way, a bodhisattva should expound the Dharma for them, courageously and fearlessly, without having any expectation in return. They should not have intimate relationship with widows or unmarried women, as well as hermaphrodites. Moreover, they should not cherish intimate friendships with slaughterers or meat butchers hunters and fishermen, those who gain profits through killing lives, those who make a living through meat peddling or prostitutes pandering. They should keep these people at bay. They should not engage in extreme sports such as wrestling, nor should they associate with a courtesan or lady of the evening. They should not expound the Dharma to a woman in an enclosed area. If they have no choice but to do so, they should avoid humor or laughter. If they enter a village in search of food, they should bring along another monk. If there is no other monk, then they should think of the Buddha with a focused mind. These are what I mean by appropriate actions and associations. Abiding by these two principles, they will be able to expound the Dharma with peace and joy. They should not practice the superior, mediocre, or inferior dharma, or the dharma of conditioned or unconditioned, real or unreal, nor should they discriminate between men or women. They should perceive as if the dharma cannot be known or seen. Then this is called the actions of bodhisattvas. They should perceive the dharma as intrinsically empty, with no substance or permanence, no beginning or ending. Then this is called the associations for people of wisdom. The distortion in perception stems from the discrimination of phenomena as existing or non-existing, real or unreal, created or not created, in a secluded place. 
they should practice and master their minds. So that they can firmly abide. In the stillness of Mount Sumeru. They should perceive the Dharma. As having no substantiality. Like an empty space. Without a firm solidity. No birth, no emerging. No movement, no regression. Perceiving the eternal unity of one single form. Is what I called the appropriate associations. After my Parinirvana. If there are monks. Who abide by the actions. And associations. They will be able to expound the Lotus Sutra. Boldly and courageously. When Bodhisattvas Mahasattvas. Enter into a quiet room at times. They should embrace the right meditation. To observe the true nature of the Dharma. Arising from meditation. They should expound the Lotus Sutra. Eloquently and persuasively. For the kings and rulers. Princes, ministers, and ordinary citizens. Brahmins and the rest. Their minds should be. Valiantly at peace. O Manjushri. These are the basic principles. That Bodhisattvas Mahasattvas should adhere to. So that they can expound the Lotus Sutra in the future. With peace and joy. Summary Overview, Chapter 14, Expounding with Peace and Joy, Section 3, Paragraphs 1-15 Bodhisattvas who wish to preach the Lotus Sutra effectively so that people are receptive to the teaching should cultivate qualities such as patience, perseverance, and joyful and peaceful states of mind. When people raise questions, they should always answer by referring to the great vehicle so that people will acquire a comprehensive understanding. Furthermore, they should avoid making comparative analysis of the strengths and weaknesses of other people or sutras so as to avoid consequences such as exile or physical assault by swords or staves. O Manjushri! Moreover, in the latter day of the Dharma, after Tathagata has entered Parinirvana, if they wish to expound the Lotus Sutra, they should follow the principles of expounding with peace and joy. If they wish to verbally expound or read the Lotus Sutra, they should not take delight in identifying the faults of people or the sutras, being contemptuous of other preachers or discussing the strengths or weaknesses of others. When dealing with shravakas, they should not engage in name-calling or discuss their shortcomings, nor should they praise their virtues or develop feelings of resentment toward them. If they are competent in cultivating minds of peace and joy, listeners will not oppose their intentions and teachings. If they are asked difficult questions, they should explain in terms of the great vehicle only, instead of the lesser vehicle, so that these people are able to acquire perfect wisdom. Thereupon, the Bhagavath, wishing to reiterate his meaning, proclaimed in stanzas. Bodhisattvas Mahasattvas should always expound the Dharma with peace and joy. They should get ready the rostrum. In a clean and pure location. They should ensure their inward and outward cleanliness. By anointing their body with oil. Taking a shower to cleanse the defilement. And putting on a clean garment. Seated peacefully on the Dharma seat. They should teach in response to the questions asked. They should expound the wonderful meanings. With a gentle and composed countenance. For the monks, the nuns, the lay male disciples, the lay female disciples, the kings, princes, ministers, officers, and ordinary citizens. If they are asked difficult questions, they should answer by explaining the meanings, by making distinctions, in the form of parables, metaphors, similes, or reasoning. By using the expedient methods, they are able to lead people to aspire for enlightenment, so that they can gradually accumulate blessings. In entering the Buddha way, they should eliminate minds of slothfulness and thoughts of negligence, free from worries and anxiety. They will then be able to expound the Dharma compassionately. From dawn to dusk, they should always expound the unsurpassed way. By explaining causes and conditions. Immeasurable parables, metaphors, and similes. So as to bring joy and happiness to all living beings. 
through the revelation of the ultimate truth. They should have no expectation. With respect to clothing and bedding, food, beverages, and medicines. Instead, they should single mindedly think of expounding the Dharma of causality with the vow of attaining Buddhahood and leading all living beings to do likewise. This action will bring great benefit to them, for they will be able to give offerings with peace and joy. After my Paranirvana, if there are monks who are able to expound eloquently the Lotus Sutra of the Magnificent Dharma, free of envy and anger, or any other hindrances or obstacles, free of worries or distress, over those who rebuke or revile them, then they will have no fear of being attacked by swords or staves, or of being banished in exile, because of their steadfastness in patience and endurance. Wise people such as these will be skillful in cultivating their minds that abide in the peace and joy that I have mentioned above. The merits and virtues of these people cannot be fully expressed using parables, metaphors, or similes. For thousands of millions of billions of culpas. Summary Overview, Chapter 14, Expounding with Peace and Joy, Section 4, Paragraphs 1 to 11. The third principle is to regard Buddhas as their benevolent fathers and bodhisattvas as great teachers. Bodhisattvas Mahasattvas should refrain from engaging in unworthy debates over different doctrines so as to avert squabbles and disputes. They should also be mindful not to cause regrets and doubts in other disciples by making insensitive and arrogant remarks. In addition, they should practice equality in the preaching of the Dharma by knowing when to stop when sufficient Dharma has been taught. If they are able to expound with peace and joy, they will be able to attract followers who will listen and have faith in their teachings. O Manjushri! Furthermore, during the latter age in the future when the Dharma is about to perish, Bodhisattvas Mahasattvas should embrace, read, or recite the Lotus Sutra without envy, obsequiousness, or deceit. They should not despise or rebuke disciples or practitioners of the Buddha way by discussing their strengths and weaknesses. They should not heckle the monks, nuns, lay male disciples, or lay female disciples who seek the way of Shravakas, Pratyabuddhas, or Bodhisattvas to have doubts or regrets by making such remarks, you are still far from the way and you will never be able to attain perfect wisdom. Why is this so? Because if they do so, they become thoughtless people who are idle in the practice of the way. Moreover, they should avoid engaging in frivolous debate over different doctrines as this will result in disputes. Instead, they should view all living beings with great compassion. Specifically, they should view Tathagatas as their benevolent fathers and Bodhisattvas as their great teachers. They should always worship Mahasattvas everywhere in the ten directions with deep reverence. For the sake of all living beings, they should expound the Dharma with fairness. The principle of fairness means expounding the Dharma in a moderate way that is not too much nor too little. Even for those who are passionate about the Dharma, they should not expound more than is sufficient. O Manjushri! During the latter age in the future when the Dharma is about to perish, if Bodhisattvas Mahasattvas could apply the third principle of expounding with peace and joy, they will experience no anxiety or confusion in preaching and they will surely find promising students to read and recite the sutra together. They will also be able to attract a large congregation of people to listen to their preaching. After these people in the congregation have heard the Dharma, they will embrace it, after they have embraced it, they will recite it, after they have recited it, they will preach it, and after they have preached it, they will copy it and lead others to copy it and give offerings to the scrolls of the Lotus Sutra with reverence, respect, and praise. Thereupon, the Bhagavath, wishing to reiterate his meaning, proclaimed in stanzas. If they wish to expound the Lotus Sutra, they should discard envy, egoism, arrogance, and fawning hearts of deceit and insincerity. Instead, they should always practice integrity and honesty. They should not despise others with disdain. Nor should they engage in frivolous debate. They should not cause doubts and regrets. 
by making such remarks. You will not be able to attain Buddhahood. True children of the Buddhas will always expound the Dharma with gentleness and forbearance, with an all-embracing compassion, without the mind of slothfulness or negligence. As for bodhisattvas everywhere in the ten directions, who practice the way out of compassion for all living beings, they should accept these bodhisattvas as their great teachers, with hearts of reverence. They should think of all Buddha's Bhagavats as their unsurpassed fathers, by abandoning minds of arrogance. They will be able to expound the Dharma without hindrance. This is the third principle for a wise person to embrace. By expounding in peace and joy with a focused mind, they will gain respect from immeasurable living beings. Summary Overview, Chapter 14, Expounding with Peace and Joy, Section 5, Paragraphs 1-4 to The fourth principle is to develop a mind of great compassion for all living beings, especially those who have yet to encounter the Lotus Sutra. In this way, they will gain respect and trust from people as well as protection from the heavenly gods. O Manjushri! Moreover, during the latter age when the Dharma is about to perish, Bodhisattvas Mahasattvas who are able to accept and embrace the Lotus Sutra should cultivate minds of great compassion for lay disciples, monks or nuns. As for those who are not Bodhisattvas, they should also cultivate minds of great compassion by thinking as such, these people have suffered great losses. Although Tathagata uses the expedient methods to expound the Dharma according to the capacities of people, they have not been able to hear, become aware of, or be awakened to the Dharma. Nor do they inquire, believe, or understand the Dharma. Even though these people do not inquire, believe, or understand the Lotus Sutra, once I attain supreme perfect enlightenment, I will use my divine powers and the power of wisdom to lead them in embracing the Dharma. O Manjushri! After the Parinirvana of Tathagata, Bodhisattvas Mahasattvas who are able to apply the fourth principle will be free of errors. Monks, nuns, lay male disciples, lay female disciples, kings, princes, great ministers, ordinary citizens, brahmins, and householders will constantly give offerings, reverence, respect, and praises to them. For the sake of hearing the Dharma, the heavenly gods in the sky will always follow and attend to them. If they are asked difficult questions by people who visit them in a village, a city, or a secluded forest, heavenly gods will protect them day and night because of the Dharma. Their preachings are able to elicit joy in the listeners. Why is this so? Because the Lotus Sutra is mindfully guarded and protected by the divine powers of the Buddhas in the past, present, and future. O Manjushri! There are immeasurable lands in the universe where many have not heard the name of the Lotus Sutra, much less are they able to see, embrace, read, or recite it. Summary Overview, Chapter 14, Expounding with Peace and Joy, Section 6, Paragraphs 1-10 to Parable of the Precious Pearl in the Topknot Once, there was a holy king of wheel-turning who rewarded victorious soldiers by doling out mansions, garments, and various treasures. However, he kept a precious pearl in his top knot and only gave this precious pearl away and an outstanding soldier proved himself worthy by scoring great victories in the battles against devils. Eventually, when the soldier had proven himself, the precious pearl was given away by the king. Key Messages The Lotus Sutra is the precious pearl that is being taught by the Buddha, it is taught last because it is the foremost among all sutras. Once a person has triumphed over devils such as the five skandhas, earthly desires, death, and three poisons, the Buddha will bestow the precious pearl by expounding the Lotus Sutra. Simply put, the teaching of the Lotus Sutra is the ultimate reward in the journey of attaining Buddhahood. O Manjushri! Suppose there was a powerful holy king of wheel-turning who wished to conquer and subdue other countries through his might. The minor kings, however, disobeyed his commands. Thereafter, King of Wheel-Turning commanded his armies to launch an attack at them. The king was exhilarated, knowing that his soldiers had scored victory in a battle. As a recognition of their successes, he rewarded them according to their merits by bestowing lands, 
properties, mansions, villages, cities, robes, or personal ornaments, not to mention various precious articles such as gold, silver, lapis lazuli, seashells, agates, corals, or ambers, elephants, horses, carriages, male and female servants, and ordinary citizens. Nevertheless, the bright pearl hidden in his topknot remained untouched. Why? Because the king alone possessed the pearl on his topknot. If he were to give it away recklessly, his retinue and followers would be greatly astounded. O oh Manjushri! So does the Tathagata. He has reigned over the Dharma land and rules as the king of the threefold world through his power of meditation and wisdom. However, the devil kings are unwilling to obey him. The various wise and holy military leaders of Tathagata engage them in spiritual battles. If any of the soldiers achieves victory, the Buddha will be delighted and he will gladden them by expounding various sutras in the midst of the four groups of people. He will bestow many spiritual treasures of the Dharma such as the meditation, liberation, the power of perfect foundations, etc. He will also bestow the city of Nirvana by telling them they have attained Parinirvana. By developing their minds, he brings delights to their hearts. Yet, he does not expound the Lotus Sutra. O Manjushri! Rejoiced over the great victories by his soldiers, the king of will turning would then bring out the extraordinary pearl of the finest quality that had been kept in his top knot for ages. The pearl had not been indiscriminately given away, but now he bestowed it to them. So does the Tathagata. As the supreme king of Dharma in the threefold world, he uses the Dharma to teach and transform all living beings. Tathagata will also be elated when he observes that his wise and holy soldiers have successfully defeated the devil of five skandhas, the devil of earthy desires, and the devil of death, not to mention achieving great distinctions in eliminating the three poisons, escaping the threefold worlds, and destroying the nets of devils. The Lotus Sutra is capable of leading all living beings to attain perfect wisdom. However, it will also attract much hostility in the world, hence it is difficult to believe. It has not been expounded before, but now I will expound it. O Manjushri! The Lotus Sutra is the foremost teaching among all sutras that are expounded by Tathagata. Among all sutras that I have expounded, the Lotus Sutra is the most profound. Therefore, the sutra is bestowed the last, just as the great king who at last gave away his precious bright pearl that he had guarded for so long. O Manjushri! The Lotus Sutra is the secret treasury of all Buddhist Tathagatas. The Lotus Sutra is the foremost among all sutras. For many long nights, I have mindfully guarded and protected the sutra, never have I expounded the sutra indiscriminately. Today, for the very first time, I have decided to proclaim the Lotus Sutra for all of you. Thereupon, the Bhagavath, wishing to reiterate his meaning, proclaimed in stanzas. Summary Overview, Chapter 14, Expounding with Peace and Joy, Section 7, Paragraphs 1-27 Shakyamuni Buddha speaks in poetic stanzas as a summary of his teachings. He also enumerates the merits, benefits, and protection achieved from embracing the Lotus Sutra. Only people of patience and perseverance, who have all-encompassing compassion, will be able to expound the Sutra praised by the Buddha. In the latter day of the age, those who embrace the Lotus Sutra, be it lay disciples, monks, and nuns, or non-bodhisattvas, should embrace compassionate hearts by thinking as such. It will be a great loss for those who have not heard or believe in the Lotus Sutra. Once I have attained Buddhahood, I will use the expedient methods to expound this sutra to them, so that they may abide in it. Suppose there was a powerful king of wheel turning, who bestowed various articles to any of the soldiers, who scored a distinction in a battle. Elephants, horses, carriages, personal ornaments, lands, mansions, villages, towns, or garments and an assortment of precious jewels. Male and female servants were all joyously bestowed by the king. 
If there was one person who was remarkably brave and strong, who was able to do the most challenging tasks, the king would remove the bright pearl from his topknot and bestow it to him. Tathagata is also the same. He is the king of the Dharma, who possesses great endurance and perseverance, the treasury of wisdom, great mercy and compassion, to transform the world with his Dharma. When he observes all beings, living in torment and suffering, who wish to gain emancipation, by battling the many devils, he expounds a litany of teachings for them. For these living beings, he uses the great expedient methods to expound various sutras. When he knows living beings who have developed the power to perceive his teachings, he will then expound the Lotus Sutra during the latter age for them. This resembles the king who removed the bright pearl from his topknot and gave it away to the deserving one. The Lotus Sutra is the most eminent the highest among all sutras. It is the Dharma that I have always guarded and protected, instead of expounding openly and indiscriminately. Now is the right time for me to expound the Lotus Sutra for all of you. After my Parinirvana, those who seek the Buddha way and those who wish to preach the Lotus Sutra with peace and joy should apply the four principles. Those who read the Lotus Sutra will always be free of worry and anxiety, free of illnesses and agonies. Their countenance will be fair and radiant, and they will not be born poorly, lowly, or unsightly. Holy and wise they will be. A delightful mean for all living beings to see. The heavenly angels will always be ready to serve. Swords and staves will not touch them. Nor will poisons harm them. If people were to rebuke and revile them, their mouths would be sealed. They are able to travel around fearlessly. Just like the Lion King. They will be endowed with bright wisdom. As brilliant as the sun. Even in their dreams. They will only have wonderful events. Seeing all Tathagatas being seated on the lion thrones, and a multitude of monks, gathering around to hear the Dharma. Again, they will see, dragons, spirits, and azuras, as numerous as the Ganges's sands, pressing their palms together in reverence. They will find themselves there, expounding the Dharma for them. Again, they will also see, Buddhas whose bodies of golden hue, emit immeasurable rays of light, illuminating everywhere. They will hear the Buddhas, expounding various doctrines with Brahma voice. When the Buddha preaches the unsurpassed Dharma, for the four groups, they will find themselves among the assembly, pressing their palms, praising the Buddha, listening to the Dharma joyously and giving offerings. They will receive Therni an evidence of irreversible wisdom. When the Buddha knows their hearts have deeply entered the Buddha way, he will bestow upon them the prophecy of attaining supreme perfect enlightenment. O oh, virtuous men! All of you will gain immeasurable wisdom by walking the great path of the Buddha way in future lifetimes. Gloriously adorned with purity, your land will be incomparably vast. There will be four groups of people, listening to the Dharma with their palms pressed. Again, they will find themselves in the midst of mountains and forests, practicing the benevolent Dharma and receiving actual proof of the truth of reality. Deep in meditation, they will meet Buddhas in the ten directions. The Buddhas in their golden hue are adorned with hundreds of good fortunes. Those who hear the Dharma and expound for others will always have wonderful dreams. They will dream of becoming kings who forsake their palaces and attendants and the five most splendid desires to arrive at the sanctuaries of the way. 
seated on the lion thrones. Under the Bodhi, trees. They will gain the Buddha wisdom. After seven days of seeking the Dharma. Having attained the unsurpassed way. They will turn the Dharma wheel. By expounding to the four groups of people. After having preached. The magnificent Dharma of impeccable perfection. For thousands of millions of billions of kulpas. Saving immeasurable living beings. They will eventually enter nirvana. Just like a lamp being extinguished. When the last smoke goes out. During the age of evil in the future. People who are able to expound the foremost dharma. Will receive tremendous gains. Which are all the virtues and merits as described above.